chapter 12, verses 8 through 10. And you remember the last two gifts of the Spirit that we covered were diverse kinds of tongues or different kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues. So now I want us to begin a study on the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. This is one of my all-time favorite subjects to study and to teach about. Over the years, I have prayed for many, many people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, there's just nothing like someone receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that right, dear? She received last Sunday. Oh, it's just so awesome. I get just as excited when I see someone receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit as I was excited myself to receive all those years ago. So in this teaching series, we're going to begin to cover some of the most frequently asked questions concerning the subject of being filled with the Spirit, being baptized with the Holy Spirit. You may have heard it called the second blessing. You may have heard the term receiving the fullness of the Holy Spirit. I'm sure you've heard all of these terms used to describe this glorious experience of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now first, let's clear up some confusion concerning the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit is a he. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The King James Version has been one of the causes of confusion concerning the Holy Spirit because the King James translators were not consistent in translating some verses from the original Greek language to English. For example, look at your handout. In Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27, the scripture says, Likewise the Spirit, capital S, referring to the Holy Spirit, also helpeth our infirmities or our weaknesses, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit itself, maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The King James translators notice verse 26. They translated the Holy Spirit as its self. But then they turned right around in the next verse, in verse 27, and they translated it co correctly as He, the Holy Spirit. He, speaking of the Holy Spirit. So the King James translators themselves were not consistent in translating the Holy Spirit as a He, as a person. So what did Jesus say concerning the Holy Spirit? In John chapter 16, verses 13 through 15, Jesus said, How be it when he, the Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear. That shall he speak, and he will shew or show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew or show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine, and shall shew or show it unto you. In these three verses, Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit nine times as he, as a person. The Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy 
Spirit is a person. Now let's begin our study with the most frequent question that I have been asked over the years concerning the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that question is, did you receive all of the Holy Spirit you will ever receive at salvation? Or is there an experience in addition to your salvation experience known as being filled with the Holy Spirit or being baptized in the Holy Spirit? Growing up in the Baptist church, I was taught that I received all of the Holy Spirit that there was to receive when I was born again. So, the question is, is there an experience in addition to salvation known as being filled with the Holy Spirit or being baptized in the Holy Spirit? Let's go to the Word of God and find the answer to this question. And we're going to let the Word of God be our teacher, to be our God, and to be our final authority on this subject of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 19, verses 1 and 2, the Word of God says, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, if they were disciples, that meant that they were born again. That meant that they were followers of Jesus. Verse 2, Paul said to these certain disciples, these born-again believers, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And what was their answer? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. They said, what? Holy what? Ghost what? We've never heard of such a thing. We've never heard that there is such a thing as the Holy Ghost. And many Christians are just like these believers in Ephesus. They've never heard about the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. They've never understood and known that you can receive the infilling, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There is such a thing as the Holy Spirit and being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And Paul begins to teach them about the Holy Spirit in verses 3 through 6. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Speaking of John the Baptist, the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 4. Then said Paul, John, speaking of John the Baptist, verily or truly baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them. And they spake or spoke with tongues and prophesied. So in this passage, we see clearly that salvation and receiving the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in other tongues are indeed two separate experiences. Receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is an experience in addition to being born again. We know this for a fact because Paul asked the question in verse 2. Look at it again. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? After you was saved, after you was born again, they answered him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Verse 6, Paul said, he laid his hands on them. What happened when Paul laid his hands upon these believers? The Holy Ghost came on them. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. What did they do? They spoke with tongues. Not only that, they began to prophesy. People ask, I thought that the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of your spirit when you're born again. Yes, that is 
Spirit when you are saved. You do indeed receive the Holy Spirit at salvation, but only in a measure. You do not receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit until you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I always illustrate it this way, and we're so pressed for time, I don't have time in the morning teachings to do illustrations. I love illustrations because people never forget them. When I teach on the baptism of the Holy Spirit and answer this question, I always have a pitcher with water and I have an empty glass. And I say, I pick up that empty glass and I say, this glass is just like your spirit was before he was born again. Before being born again, your spirit is empty. Your spirit is void. Your spirit is dead. But at salvation, you are changed. You're transformed from death unto life. Because the life of Jesus comes into your spirit and gives life to that dead spirit within you. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 says, Behold, Jesus said, Look. I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. 1 John chapter 4, verses 12 through 13 says, If we love one another, God what dwells, live in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he has given us what he's given us of his spirit, capital S. He has given us a portion, given us of his spirit. The Holy Spirit comes, dwells, lives in your spirit when you was born again, when you was saved. But you do not receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit at salvation. And when I illustrate it, I pour that empty glass, I take that pitcher of water, and I pour that glass half full. And I say, this is what your spirit is like at salvation. Your spirit is transformed from that empty glass, that dead, lifeless spirit, you receive the Holy Spirit. And I pour that glass half full of water. And then I say, but when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, then you receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And then I take that pitcher of water and I pour it into that glass that's half filled with water. And I keep pouring and pouring and pouring water into that pitcher until that glass is filled, 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 until it's up to the brim. And then I keep pouring and that glass overflows with that water. And so that's like your spirit. When you're born again, your glass, your spirit's half full of the Holy Spirit. And then when you receive the baptism, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit fills, 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 fills your spirit until your spirit overflows. And then you are full of the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 7, verses 38 through 9, Jesus said, He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, where? Out of his belly. Where does the spirit reside? In your belly, in your spirit, in your innermost man. Out of his belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. A little trickle? A little stream? No, rivers. Verse 39. But this spake he of the spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. In other words, he had gone to the cross. He had died on the cross. He wasn't buried in the grave, was resurrected, and hadn't ascended back to the Father. So at salvation... You get a, a stream of the water of the Holy Spirit. But then Jesus said that you're going to receive the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost at the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. You not only have a stream. 
alive are being born again, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might, what? Receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They were saved, but they were not filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse 17. Then laid they their hands on them. And what happened? They received the Holy Ghost. Here again we see born again believers who had not received this experience of being baptized in the Holy Spirit or being filled with the Holy Spirit. And I want you to notice how Peter and John prayed for these believers at Samaria. Verse 15. They prayed for them. Verse 17. They laid their hands on them. Why? In order that they might receive the Holy Ghost. They didn't pray for God to send them the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit was sent to indwell, to live in believers and to baptize them. On the day of Pentecost is when the Holy Spirit was sent. And the Holy Spirit has never left. The Holy Spirit is here. And all we have to do is be like these believers. Just receive the fullness. Receive the infilling. Receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Just as these believers received, received him. When Peter and John laid their hands upon them and prayed for them. Now. Some say, oh, but this passage does not say that they spoke in tongues. It just says that they must have re just received salvation because it doesn't say that they spoke in tongues. But let's read on and see something else that will help clear this up. In Acts chapter 8, verses 18 through 20, and when Simon saw, this is a, a man that was watching what had just transpired, watched Peter and John lay his hands upon these believers and watched them be filled with the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power. That on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the what gift of God may be purchased with money. Now notice verse 18 says, When Simon saw, what did Simon see? He saw that when the apostles laid their hands on these believers, that the Holy Spirit was imparted to them. And Simon wanted that same ability, that same power, so that when he laid his hands upon people, that they would be filled with the Holy Ghost. Simon saw an outward manifestation which let him know beyond any doubt that, hey, these people that are, have already been saved, they have now received the Holy Ghost. When, when Peter and John laid their hands upon him. Now, this could not have been their salvation experience because you cannot see an evidence every time when someone is born again. Some people, they weep, they cry, and then when they accept Jesus as their Savior, they, their countenance changes, they, they are smiling, jumping, shouting, but I saw a lot of people come to the altar, pray and receive the Lord, and be born again, and they, their expression never changes. They don't even smile, they just turn and walk back. 
saw different kinds of unclean animals. And God was showing Peter that he was to go to the Gentiles and preach the gospel to the Gentiles. And you know that up until that time, the Jewish people considered Gentiles to be unclean. So Peter, he went to Cornelius' house. And when he got there, there were many people assembled there in this Gentile man's home named Cornelius. And so let's pick up the story where Peter is speaking to this group of Gentiles in Acts chapter 10, verses 44 through 45. It says, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, the Jewish men, which believed, were astonished. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. These Jewish men which accompanied or went with Peter down to Cornelius' house, down to this Gentile man's house, while right in the middle of Peter's sermon while he was preaching to these Gentiles, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they received the outpouring. They received the infilling of the Holy Ghost just like the Jewish believers had. Now the next verse, what evidence? What evidence did Peter and these other Jewish men with him see that proved to them that these Gentile believers had been filled with the Holy Ghost? Do you remember? We just covered that Simon saw something that those believers had received because he wanted to buy it with money. What was the evidence Simon saw they had was spoke been speaking in other tongues? So what was the evidence here in Acts chapter 10 that Peter and these other Jewish believers saw that these Gentiles had just been filled with the Holy Ghost? What was the evidence? Verse 46. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Look at it, look at it, look at it. They heard them speak. They heard them speak. Did they hear these Gentiles speak in their own native language, which they spoke in all the time? No, they heard them speak with tongues. That heavenly prayer language which you receive when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues is the evidence of receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just like these Gentiles spoke in other tongues. This was the evidence that proved to Peter and the other Jews. Men there in that room that day, that these Gentile believers had just been filled with the Holy Ghost, just as those Jewish believers were. This is the evidence that we see when someone is filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! Now, when these Jewish believers in Jerusalem, back home in Jerusalem, heard that the Holy Spirit had been poured out upon the Gentiles, these Jewish believers back home in Jerusalem were not happy about it because the Jewish people despised Gentiles. So they questioned Peter when Peter went back to Jerusalem. So Peter begins to explain to these Jewish men back home in Jerusalem. Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 5. Peter begins to explain. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision, the Jewish people, contended with Peter, saying, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised and did eat with them? How could you, Pete? How could you do such a thing? How could you, a Jewish man, stoop so low that you would even enter into a 
Gentiles' home and sit down and eat with uncircumcised, unclean Gentiles. Verses 4 and 5. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto the saying. He went step by step. This is what happened. This is what happened. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. And a certain vessel descended as it had been a great sheep, led down from heaven by four corners. And it came even to me. Peter goes on and explaining in the following verses, describing all the unclean animals which he saw in that sheep that while he was having that vision. You remember I told you this is the original pigs in a blanket that Peter saw. And then Peter continues to explain to these circumcised Jews. Peter told them that as soon as the vision ended, the Holy Spirit spoke to him. If you read that story in verses 11 and 12 of, of Acts chapter 11, Peter said that when the vision ended, the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, three men are downstairs looking for you. And the Holy Spirit told Peter to go with these men. Let's pick up the story in Acts chapter 11, verses 15 through 17. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, had, how he had said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye, you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them, speaking of the Gentile believers, the light gift, the same gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I, who was I, that I should withstand God. Verse 16, how this? He said, the Lord Jesus said, you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Jesus wants born again believers to receive this experience of being baptized with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a what? A gift. Verse 17. Pete said, God gave these Gentile believers this same gift that he gave us circumcised Jews, us Jewish believers. Peter said God gave them the same gift that he did us. What was this gift? In the Greek, it's Dorea, D-O-R-E-A. If you want to look it up, it's number 1431 in a Greek concordance. And it comes from a root word that literally means a free gift or a present. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a free gift. The Holy Spirit is a present which the Lord Jesus wants each and every believer to receive. It is a free gift to us, but it costs the Lord Jesus his life in order to provide this free gift to us. Now, the next question.
Spirit. Oh, so many Christians are satisfied just with their salvation experience. Oh, millions and millions of people have been born again, lived their whole lives and died and gone to heaven without being filled with the Holy Spirit. So you don't have to receive this experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues after you're born again, but you can receive this gift of the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus' death, burial, resurrection, and his ascension providing you not only to receive salvation, but to also receive this gift, this glorious gift of being filled with the Holy Spirit or being baptized with the Holy Spirit. So why not go ahead and receive all that Jesus has provided for you? Why do you want to live your whole life just with your glass, just with your spirit being half filled, just receiving half of what Jesus provided for you through his torturous death of going to the cross, dying for you and going to hell in your place and being resurrected and ascending back to the Father? Why would you want to live your whole life just receiving half? of what Jesus' death, burial, resurrection provided. Jesus wants you to have all that he provided for you. After dying, he provided this glorious gift of the Holy Spirit, and he expects all of us to receive what he has provided for us. How do we know that? Let's read Jesus' last words before he ascended back to the Father. If someone is dying and you are in their presence, their last words, you're going to pay attention to the last words that they speak, aren't you? Well, these are Jesus' last words to the believers before he left this earth and ascended back to the Father. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 20. And he, Jesus, said unto them, the disciples, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs, these signs, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall what? Speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. By accident, don't handle snakes on purpose. They shall take up serpents, just like that venomous viper attached itself to Paul's hand and shook it off in the fire and was unharmed. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth, the disciples went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Or so be it. Look at verse 17 again. What does this verse say? It says that signs shall follow them that believe. What is one of the signs that are to follow those who believe, those who are born again? Jesus said one of these signs that should follow the believers is that they will speak with new tongues. Look at this phrase. These signs shall follow them that believe. In the original Greek, it says these signs shall accompany the believing ones. These signs shall accompany, go right along with, go right beside the ones who believe, the, those who are born again. If I said, Donna, would you go with me to Walmart? What is she going to do? She's going to get in my car, ride with me to Walmart, get out of the car with me, and walk up and down the aisles of Walmart. What is she doing? She is accompanying me. 
She is going with me. So Jesus said, these signs shall accompany. They will go with you who believe. You who believe shall speak with new tongues. In other words, these signs shall accompany you. And Jesus said, you are to be filled. You are to receive the infilling, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and speak in other tongues. My Zodiacs, Word Testament, New Testament, Word Study, New Testament. Oh, this is a great Word Study research. The Zodiacs, Word Study, New Testament says that this word tongues in the original Greek, when a Greek language, this word tongues means a foreign or strange language which one has not learned, but yet is enabled to speak as a result of the supernatural intervention of the Holy Spirit, particularly in what the New Testament calls the baptism in the Holy Spirit by Jesus Christ. So, in Jesus' last words before he left this earth and ascended back to the Father, in Mark chapter 16, verse 17, Jesus himself said, These signs shall follow a company. Go right along with them that believe. In my name they shall speak with new tongues. They will speak in a foreign or strange language, which they have never learned, but are enabled to speak as a result of the supernatural intervention of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah! Don't you want to, re to receive this glorious experience of being filled with the Holy Spirit, being baptized in the Holy Spirit, and speak in tongues? Tongues that you have not learned Tongues that you have never heard before, but yet those words are coming out of your mouth. You are enabled to speak in this strange, in this supernatural, in this foreign language. How? By the supernatural intervention of the Holy Spirit, you receive the fullness. Remember that glass half full of water? When you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, your spirit is filled, filled, filled. Jesus said, out of your body shall flow rivers of living water out of your spirit. Your, after, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, your spirit is filled, 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 filled with the Holy Spirit until your spirit overflows. And that manifestation, that evidence that you have been filled with the Holy Spirit is that you speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit gives you utterance. You have the opportunity to speak in a language that no one else in this entire world speaks in but you. The Holy Spirit gives you your own unique individual prayer language, one that you have never learned, but yet you are enabled to speak when you receive the fullness, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Jesus wants you to receive this glorious gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And not just be satisfied with being born again, but Jesus wants you to have all that he provided for you through his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. Don't you want all he has for you? I do. Give it all to me, Lord. I want all that you have, which includes being baptized, being filled with the precious Doria, the precious gift of the infilling, the indwelling, the fullness of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking 